All right, tech fans, so check it out. This year's CES 2016 was very different for me than a lot of other CESs. Gone were the mass displays of computers and all the computer components, and now there's just a whole different type of environment here. Now it's all about phones, virtual reality, audio, and a lot of different things. But this year's CES still had a lot of cool things. One of the very first things that we set our eyes upon when we walked into CES 2016 was Intel's massive booth featuring a lot of things including their Curry technology. Right off the bat, they had an artist demonstrating on a screen virtual reality art, which was pretty cool. The guy was using a VR headset and playing around and doing a bunch of different designs on the screen. Now, although in its infancy, this technology in the future can grow and become something really, really cool. Other things we saw were people playing games. Obviously, virtual reality is coming right around the corner. Many companies have products that are geared to be released later on this year, and we saw that evident all over the place. Another really cool thing that was inside of the Intel booth was this thing called Torch. Now, this was a game that you really get interactive in. Whatever you're doing on the sand, and yes, that's just plain sand that you get in the beach that you see right there, you interact with this, and a screen is shot down onto this, and everything that you do is done in real time. So you build up walls, you move mines, and there are also some buttons and a controller that are used as well. So it's kind of like mixing an old school video game with something totally modern. It was killer, it was a lot of fun, and I had a great laugh doing it. Drone technology is starting to be prevalent everywhere. And yes, Intel and their Curry technology was on the spot. They had a drone that was really, really, it was very interesting to say the least. They had a guy walking in as a volunteer and the drone could basically do a few different things. It could either follow the person around or completely avoid that person. And another cool thing about it is it mapped the entire area of the room and you could fly that thing inside the room on its own autopilot without hitting anything. So this is very interesting technology. If you're looking for like technology to like deliver stuff this is going to be one of those things I think that's going to hit the market because the way that this thing works is it works with the environment around it so you could actually have this thing I would think in theory go and map the entire city and know where it's going this is definitely tech of tomorrow and really cool stuff that's coming and although Intel had their drone stuff going on they were definitely not the only people all around the entire CES 2016, you could see that drone technology is coming. I would expect that 2016 is going to be the year of the drone. TVs were also something that were all over the place at CES 2016. Now, you guys all know about 4K TVs that are all over the place. You guys all know about OLED technology because you guys saw me review that LG TV. But there's also companies out there who have another version called ULED. And the only real difference that I could see with my eyes, honestly, between the two was that the ULED was actually just a little bit brighter in some places. But then in other places, the OLED was brighter. So making a distinction between the two, I don't think there's much of a difference in technology. I think it's just a name branding but obviously these TVs are incredible and they also come in 8K, that's right. 4K is a thing of the past now. And while we were there, even though they didn't have it on display, they had told me clearly that they have 10K TVs that will be coming out later this year. It was so real that I actually tried to reach in and uh, grab a beverage from one of the TVs, but nope, it wasn't real. Damn them. All right, guys, so now we've all seen 3D TVs. We know they've been out there. When you go to the movies, you throw on a pair of glasses, you watch the movie, that's really killer. But what about new TVs? And this is also something that I feel is really tech of tomorrow. Now, these are these new Ultra D TVs, and they require no glasses. That's right. This stuff is so realistic and so weird that if you turn it up really, really high, I started to actually feel a little sick because it was so 3D. They had many options there, including gaming, multi-monitor, featuring the Kung Fu Panda 3 movie that's coming out. These things look just simply incredible. Every visual aspect, all the way down to a tablet, to a big, huge, giant screen, was just incredibly 3D and required absolutely no glasses whatsoever. And the really interesting thing about this was, by a simple slide control, you could control the depth of the 3D amount that you wanted to have. You could put it to it so 3D it looks really, really weird, or just mildly 3D. The choice was yours depending on what you liked. 
Another thing that we saw all over the place at CES 2016, and I do mean all over the place, were mini cams. But one of them that really stood out was by the people over at Kodak. They have a mini cam that actually records in 360 all at once. That's right, in 360 all at one time. You know what, that is so cool. If you could do that in space or something, that could make for translating to such a cool movie. In fact, they didn't really talk about it much, but in my eyes, this would be perfect to actually make a true 3D complete surround movie where you sit down and all you have to do is basically move in your chair or something like that or have the screen move and you could totally immerse yourself in a complete 3D real world environment. Really killer stuff by the people over at Kodak. I can't wait to see how this is implemented. Everybody's familiar with Throwback Thursday. That's a term people throw around every Thursday, right? But check it out. Vinyl is actually coming back, and that's a complete throwback to the past. When I was growing up, vinyl was really all you could get your hands on. Everything was vinyl. You bought yourself a giant record. It had a cool design in the back, a cool design in the front. You pulled out a thing. There was a sleeve. There was lyrics. It was a really cool experience, and it was big, and you could hold it in your hand. And then as I got older, it just kept changing, down from a CD, down to a cassette tape, and then down to now, or what do you buy digital audio, and uh, there's nothing you can put in your hands. now. One thing I think is really cool is this company's coming back with so many different types of players and ways to play your music back that it was simply incredible. It went all the way from the cheesy all the way to the high end, but if you love vinyl and you like that, it's really cool. Now, if you don't want to own a record player, but you still want to hear your music, how about a little car that drives around on your record and plays it and plays all the sound? Is that cool or what? <laughs> now, for you artsy, fartsy vinyl lovers out there, we actually found a booth that allowed you to take your old, unworking vinyl and turn them into a custom piece of art that you could hang on your wall and say, hey, I made this. It's actually pretty cool. Another thing trending this year is 3D printing, and at CES 2016, we happened to see a lot of them. Right off the bat, we went up to a booth by the people at Polaroid, where they were making these little pieces, and we were like, hey, what are all these little pieces for? Well, they had a guy there who was happy to demonstrate, and what he did is he put all these little pieces together and made himself an atom, and you guys can see that he was a very happy camper with his work. 3D printing is definitely the way of the future. We saw a lot of different applications being used and a lot of different things being made, including, that's right, the TARDIS from Doctor Who, which I thought was really cool. We also saw a wrench being made, and we saw an assembled part that was the complete byproduct of the entire process. We also got to check out a few laser printers, and even though these things aren't totally as cool as a 3D printer, you have to admire the depth and detail that this machine can bring out. I mean, this is something that the minds would be like, holy shit, how'd you do that? And while we're still on the topic of printing, what about a camera that actually printed your picture out on the spot? That's right. We were over at the booth by the people over at Polaroid, and once again, they had another killer product. Now, back when I was a kid, you actually had a camera like this, and it was what everybody used. You know, you guys can see a few here. That black camera on the right is actually the very first camera my, you know, family ever had. And the one down there below, the Barbie one, that was, geez, the Cameron's very first camera. In fact, I think it's the camera he's using now. But the really cool thing is, is now these cameras will not only store a digital image you can share, you can actually have your photo printed on the spot to give to a friend. Here we print one word, you can see it, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil, ooh. Canon had a pretty cool photo booth, but what I thought was the coolest thing was this little train. Woo woo! The Optic Lansing booth was something that was a really interesting, but the thing is it wasn't really interesting for their new speaker line. It was more interesting because of the artwork and their display. Now the speakers, they're okay. They're more of a low-end you know, thing for these guys. For me, I like their high-end stuff, but if you're looking for stuff that's waterproof or lower end, you know, Optic Lansing's obviously stepping into this realm. But what I say that was really cool was their display because their displays, honestly, were some of the best at CES 2016. Strolling around one of the halls, we came across something really weird, though, from the people over at Samsung, and this was their uh, digital fridge. Uh, now, uh, for your smart home, this might be pretty cool, but it was kind of crazy at CES to see somebody just totally you know, displaying a refrigerator and talking about how you could use and have a digital refrigerator. But it was pretty cool anyways. It was really nice and shiny, so if you like bright, shiny things and you like future tech, hey, this was something like that. Samsung also had a giant, giant TV display, and this thing looked really cool. We got to look at this thing, and it was visually exciting. But I gotta say, the people over at LG 
really outdid themselves. They had the most killer display that I think in all of CES 2016. This was visually amazing, with screens covering the entire wall and the entire roof. That's right, this was the most impressive display at CES 2016 as far as I'm concerned in the TV department. LG, you guys are getting crazy! And speaking of crazy, I tried to steal this really fast car, but it wouldn't go anywhere, damn it. I don't know how many of you out there have seen the movie Martian yet, but it's a really killer movie. And we can tell that the people over at GoPro seriously science the shit out of this. And they had the suit from the Martian movie there at the show, but unfortunately there was no Matt Damon. <laughs> You guys who follow Tech of Tomorrow, you guys know who eBlue is because we've done a few of their products over the last few years. But at this year's CES, these guys really actually kicked it up a notch. And if you guys are fans of Iron Man, which I know that you are, I know I am, they had some killer products, including a keyboard and mouse, all based off the Iron Man theme. The coolest thing, however, at the eBlue booth had to be their chair, though. Man, this thing was really comfortable, and when you weren't sitting in it, the light in the back lit red. But as soon as you sat in it, the eBlue turned to blue. So if you're looking for something that's really comfortable, totally futuristic, eh, this thing's really cool. Now while we're speaking on the topic of cool, how about the world's biggest Nintendo controller? That's right. And the funny thing is, this controller is so big that the girls in this picture, I think, would take two of them to actually lift and use it. The big guy there, he'll probably have no problem. But this is absolutely, totally the coolest, coolest thing probably at the show as far as just little niche items. The world's largest Nintendo controller, right? There were also a lot of cars at CES 2016. Really fast cars that you could actually drive and simulate via computer screens. Now, if you're into totally simulated driving, this is incredible because it's actually using a real car. So you're inside of a car simulating your driving experience, but instead of going down the road, your viewing experience is through a screen. Now I know you guys have all seen multicolored lit keyboards. They've been around for a while, but what sets Rocket apart from the rest is that these guys actually have software that can independently change the color of every single solitary key on the dang thing. And that's something that's really cool. We also saw a couple of rechargeable lithium batteries. Now, what's cool about these things is that you'd probably never ever have to buy a battery ever again for your car. The bad thing is they cost about 1600 bucks. Another big thing at CES 2016 was waterproofing. We saw all types of devices that were being made that were waterproof, from speakers, to cameras, to phones, to actually phone cases. Now this last company we saw actually made a case for the iPhone 6 and I believe for the Note as well that was completely waterproof. You put their case on and you could even drop it into a fish tank, pull it out of the fish tank and the phone was still fully functioning. All right, folks, so obviously there were many, many other things at CES 2016, but a lot of these things were rehashed. We just wanted to bring you what we thought were the really cool things at this year's show, and I hope you guys like what we brought to the table. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys back here on the channel for more tech goodness here in 2016.